From UB Stadium, you're in the bullseye. I'm Paul Peck, radio voice of Buffalo Bulls football, here following a 42-28 Buffalo Bulls loss to the Bowling Green Falcons. We will look back at this game, a game that started off with such promise for the Bulls. A 10-point early lead, a season record for Brandon Oliver, but the game slipped away, and it results in another loss for the Buffalo Bulls. We'll look at why this game slipped away, and we'll look further into the outstanding season of Brandon Oliver. It's a tremendous accomplishment for Bo to break the record, and we couldn't be more proud of this young man. We'll also shift gears and venture out of the football field onto other parts of campus. We have obviously very talented post players and talented wing players that you kind of pick your poison who you want to really focus on. It was Filson who led the way as the Bulls beat their crosstown rival Canisius. We'll look back at that big victory. Holden brings it into Filson, open left side for three. He hit it. From this game here between the Bulls and the Falcons, we'll have our Karuba Impact of the Week. And we'll also have our top five plays of the game for the final time in 2011. First and 10 from the 50, fake the handoff. Ball is tipped, it's intercepted. And Steve Means is gonna run this one in for a touchdown. Steve Means deflects it, grabs it, and runs the rest of the way for a Buffalo touchdown. I'm now joined by Bulls radio color analyst Jim Kubiak following this loss by the Bulls to the Bowling Green Falcons. There's a point in the second quarter, the Bulls get the defensive touchdown. They're getting field goals from Pat Clark. They're building a 10-point lead, and it seemed like they had all the momentum, all the excitement to end this season on a positive note. What in your mind do you think kind of changed from there? Well, Bowling Green at the end of the second quarter goes down and gets a touchdown, and then they get the ball coming out, and you know they had a three-touchdown third quarter when they were going with the wind and Buffalo really couldn't get anything going. And I think once they went up with a couple scores, it kind of got out of reach. Yeah, as you can hear and see, the wind certainly was a major factor, gusting to over 30 miles an hour here at UB Stadium. That really does impact what an offense wants to do, doesn't it? Very much so. And, you know, throwing the ball to the outside, outside the number, it becomes very difficult. And, and Buffalo had difficulty throwing the ball today. And, you know, Brandon Oliver had a great day catching the ball, running the football. He's obviously the star of this football team. And it was great to see him get going. Well, let's talk a little bit about Brandon Oliver, the outstanding player all season long for the Bulls, finishes with a flurry. He breaks James Starks' single season rushing record. Uh, who ever thought that James Starks, as good as he was, might not hold those records forever. But Brandon Oliver made sure that didn't happen, running for 127 yards. And then, as you mentioned, you throw in the all-purpose record that he breaks today, too, because he had almost 100 yards receiving. Is there anything that Brandon can't do for this offense for the next two years? No, absolutely not. And that's what's so exciting about this football player. He's a guy that not only runs the ball well, and he's the you know he's the workhorse of this offense, but he's great in protection. He's great with the ball when he's receiving, and and that's a tremendous asset to have in the backfield. And you know, look for him to have two more great years here for UB. And I think that's one of the big positives for for the Bulls and for their fans looking forward. You got Brandon Olive for two more years. You get four returning starters on the offensive line back. You get uh, Alex Newts and Fred Lee back at the wide receiver positions. The offense looks like they can really develop next year into something special. Well, I think there's a lot to look forward to for UB football. I love what Jeff Quinn brings to this program, his passion for the game and what he demands out of his players. And there's some really good young guys that are up and coming. He's got another year to recruit and get, you know, his kind of players. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to do very, very well. And I think Buffalo has a very, very bright future. On defense, the future also has the potential to be very bright. Khalil Mack has two more years left. He's going to wind up leading the Mack in tackles for loss this season. You bring some of the other young, outstanding players like Colby Way and Lee Skinner and Nadja Johnson and Courtney Lester. There's a lot of hope for this defense to get much better than they were this year. In Buffalo, you know, let's make no bones about it. They were much better this year than they were the year before, both in, in just about all every category. So I think, uh, you know, with the players that are in place and another year in the system, another year for these guys to get bigger, faster and stronger and more mature, you know, they're going to be better next year. All right, well, enjoy your uh, off season here. We'll speak with you again when we start breaking down things from the University at Georgia, where the Bulls open up next year. But first, let's look back and look forward. We head into the press conference room. Here's Jeff Quinn and the Bulls players. 
We were able to uh, do some things in the first half. I felt we were in good shape. Uh, I know that uh, the second half really is where it uh, really turned tides on us and we weren't able to respond. As I keep telling these kids, listen, it's always about finishing. You know, what happens in the first quarter is going to certainly have an effect in the end, end, end result of the game, but you got to play second half football. And that's what we didn't do. You know, we were able to get a good jump on them, and, uh, but we weren't able to sustain that. And, you know, they were, and uh, that's really the end of the game. I just think it was gradual. Um, I think uh, field position hurt us. You know, that win was was heavy, and when we were going towards the scoreboard, that's when you had your best chance to throw the ball, and, and Bowling Green capitalized on that, and we didn't. Yeah, I thought we had control at, at all points of the game. You know, we just got to stay fundamentally sound and do the little things right at all times. Because I lead by example already, so I might as well start talking, talking to everybody. So, you know, that's one thing, and just carrying on, on people with me in the summer when I work out all the time on the field. That's the way he speaks. With, with his play, with his effort, his relentless, uh, you know, approach to, you know, just playing a physical brand of football. And uh, we knew that that was a, was a key weapon for us today. And uh, certainly we're proud of him. Uh, but that's certainly not, uh, you know, that, that's really not the, the, the total uh, focus of our football team is breaking individual records. But, uh, you know, it was the game and the outcome of the game that really mattered. And any time you know it's your situation, your career, is coming to an end, it's really tough to deal with. And I want to thank uh, Coach Quinn and all the coaching staff for giving me the opportunity. I want to thank my teammates. Uh, they're, they're like my family, and uh, we'll have lifelong relationships. And I love them all with all my heart. And uh, you know what? It happens. That when you don't execute plays, when you don't do your job, um, stuff like this happens. And so I hope that this leaves a bitter taste in our mouth as a family. We can continue to progress and win the MAC championship. I've got to lead by example. I got to, uh, I talk a lot now, and I'm a vocal leader. I try to get try to get everybody hyped up, and I just got to lead by example on and off the field in the classroom first, and I got to just keep keep going, keep going.